Okay, this is Professor Strafacci, and I wanted to um, go over a list of financial ratios. I found this website. Uh, there's a ton of websites that talk about financial ratios. Obviously, this is one that I'm using, but you could look at just about anything. Uh, and in your, of course, our textbook is most important. But just to go over how to look at financial ratios, I want you to understand that you have to look at ratios in an absolute sense, not in an absolute sense, in a relative sense. And I spoke there for a minute. <clears throat> so like a doctor would look at a, at a blood test. <clears throat> there are obviously some numbers the doctor doesn't want to see. But on the other hand, there's no question that um, they have to take into account the whole patient. I mean, the history, where the patient's at, what they're dealing with. You know, a high blood, white blood cell count may not matter if you're in the middle of a flu. It might, it might matter if there shouldn't be an issue. And why, do I, why am I saying that? It's because when you're looking at financial ratios, you want to take in a more holistic approach. So, for instance, you know, you have your profitability ratios, but then you have your current ratios. And obviously, I want to stay current, and it, it always seems like it's a good idea to have more current assets, and it is. But then again, you have to look at it in the context of the business you're in and what your competitors are doing. It's not just an absolute number. None of these numbers are absolute. So, for instance, on receivables, <clears throat> it might always look like a good idea to collect your receivables quicker, but if you're pushing your clients too hard to pay their bills, they may decide to, you know, decamp and go to another uh, competitor that offers better terms. So, while it's a good idea, you want to also be able to sit down with each of your clients and decide if it's the best idea to have push them for another 10 days or 15 days to make those numbers look better. On the other, another one would be inventory turnover. Obviously, it looks like a great idea if I turn over inventory quicker. That would be a good idea, no question. We don't want to carry a lot of inventory. It could be dead weight on the shelves or in for an auto deal or in the parking lot. But on the other hand, if I'm not carrying another, enough inventory, I, my clients might not like that idea. They may want to see choices. You, know, you walk into a store, you want to see choices. Otherwise, what was the benefit of uh, taking a, getting in a car and going to the mall or going and looking at a car dealer? So you have to be careful when you look at these numbers, not to use them absolutely, but to use them relatively and to make them the starting point of the questions that you ask. Um, another one is accounts payable, you know, accounts receivable, accounts payable. You know, of course, we'd like to delay our payables as much as possible. <clears throat> but on the other hand, we don't want our, our suppliers to start wondering if we can make our payments. That may look bad with your reputation in the industry. So all of these things have to be taken into effect when uh, and into thought when you're looking at different uh, issues. So another one that I, I like to point out is the um, asset turnover number here, number nine, when net sales over average total assets. Again, a number you would want to see two companies. One company has a high asset turnover. The one another one company B has a low asset turnover. Obviously, we would want to take a look at company A because we think that's a better idea. But we might find out that company B had just put in new factories, new production facilities, in which case that would make their net sales over average total asset would lessen it, right? You have a higher denominator. But it also means that company B has new stuff, that they could be more effective, they could be more efficient, that in the future they're prepared for, <clears throat> you know, take for instance a production facility that's been revamped, it's going to be a more efficient facility that'll be around a lot longer, where company A has old equipment. And they're going to be paying that price at one point. They haven't upgraded, you know. So, <clears throat> again, asset turnover is a number where it just starts to question. Doesn't kind of, you know, obviously, if you look at it over the course of the whole industry, you get a better idea of where it should be. Uh, and in the end, what ultimately matters, debt ratios are important times. Interest earn, earn is important. But earnings per share, you know, that's where you really know what the market values are. And I like that. And, and uh, price earnings ratio is the most important, I feel, because it's what the market thinks. It's where the market is betting their money. And if the average uh, price earnings ratio right now is around 25, which implies about one divided by 25 is a 4% return on, on the, the market is that, you know, requiring your stock to return 4%. Well, if it's higher than that, then the market obviously feels your earnings are going to grow and that you're in a better competitive position. And if it's lower than that, then they think that you're a mature company. And you may want to look into why they feel that way. So if you're gauging a company, price earnings ratio is really an important number. So that's just a preview of where I went ahead with this. I will be doing more videos and taking apart each one of these ratios. But that's a start, okay? So um, thanks for listening and, we'll, and stay in touch because we'll be doing more of this.